Hello everyone, welcome to Wrestling with Green Pinstripes. I'm your host, Kalind, and on this episode, we're going to be talking about the WWE No Escape Review. Let's get on with it, shall we? Overall, there were six matches in the show, including uh, one segment, so I guess you could say seven segments overall for the entire pay-per-view event. So let's start off with the kickoff match. The kickoff match was between the club, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson against uh, the Miztourage, Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas. Uh, it was an okay match. It was a typical kickoff match, so um, nothing too special. It was like a standard tag team match that you would uh, generally see on a Monday Night Raw. So um, it's okay, nothing too predictable. Didn't really interest me, so um, it was all right. The first uh, match uh, of the No Escape pay-per-view was the Women's No Escape Construct match, which, uh, of course, uh, Bailey and Sonya Deville were the first two women in the ring while the rest of the four were inside the No Escape Construct pods uh, to wait their turn. Overall, I thought it was uh, an interesting match to start the show. Not exactly too great because uh, there wasn't that much of a storyline build for this uh, No Escape uh, women's match. But I thought it was pretty interesting like uh, when um, Sasha Banks and Mandy Rose uh, got involved in it. And I know that Mandy Rose was the first uh, to be eliminated from the No Escape construct by Sasha Banks. And then... um, Mickey James uh, got in and things got a little bit exciting and I could tell Mickey James is pretty happy to be in that match because I could tell like uh, she's been through a lot of crap in her first uh, run with the WWE going through so much uh, crappy storylines and matches because keep in mind that when Mickey James was in the WWE her first time there it was called the Divas Division back in the day so there was a lot of crap back then when Mickey James was there. So to be in the No Escape Construct uh, match, uh, I could tell that Mickey James was pretty excited. And uh, I know that uh, Mickey James uh, eliminated uh, Sonny Deville. And then afterwards, uh, Mickey James got eliminated by Bailey. So the last uh, three women to be in that No Escape Construct match was uh, Bailey, Sasha Banks, and the defending Raw Women's Champion, uh, Alexa Bliss. And uh, it definitely got interesting when uh, Sasha turned on Bailey. So um, thing, you could say that things are about to get pretty interesting from there. And uh, like uh, I know that uh, Bailey got eliminated by Alexa Bliss, which pretty much uh, sums up her entire run on Monday Night Raw. Because outside of the Raw Women's uh, Championship reign, uh, Bailey's run on the main roster has been a joke, kind of like uh, what uh, Yamcha is in Dragon Ball Z. And uh, I know that uh, Sasha Banks and uh, Alexa Bliss were the final two in the No Escape construct. And uh, at the end, uh, Alexa Bliss uh, wins to retain the Raw Women's Championship. Alexa Bliss was like uh, teasing a face turn, but I kind of knew it was a ruse because uh, Alexa Bliss uh, did uh, remain as a heel. I mean, like uh, this uh, face uh, run that she had last week, uh, kind of turning on absolution was pretty much a ruse she just wanted to retain the raw women's championship that's all i could say she just wanted to retain the raw women's championship the next match was between the raw tag team titles uh, between the bar the defending champions uh, against uh, titus worldwide decent match uh, nothing too special it was a little bit funny that's all i could say because uh, titus o'neill and uh, apollo apollo not Apollo Crews. They cut the Crews and uh, now just call him Apollo. I mean, they are they are a funny tag team. And I gotta say that uh, Dana Brooke uh, in that role as the uh, chief uh, statistician in, in that Titus Worldwide, I think this is uh, the role where she's uh, succeeding in. Because uh, when she got called up to the main roster... I thought she was a little bit green and wasn't exactly ready, but then when WWE decided to like put her in Titus Worldwide as the statistician, I thought like I thought this is the role that she could definitely excel in because uh, she plays the role of a um, of a manager. So I mean, like this was definitely something that's uh, suited to her strengths. But uh, at the end of the day. Sheamus and Cesaro, the bar, retain the Raw Tag Team title, so they don't just set the bar, they are the bar. 
Next up was the match between uh, Nia Jax versus Asuka. And uh, the theme was that uh, Nia Jax would be the one to end uh, Asuka's uh, undefeated streak since uh, joining the WWE. Uh, it was a it was a decent match. I mean, it was t- technically a filler match because Asuka was already guaranteed a Royal Rumble spot at the uh, WrestleMania card, and so there wasn't really anything to add to it. I mean, like her Rumble spot wasn't exactly on the line, and uh, I mean there was a stipulation that said that uh, if Nia Jax wins, it would become a triple threat match. But wait a second. Asuka didn't really say that she's going to face the Raw Women's Champion. Remember, she didn't really decide. So, I meant, like, what were they thinking saying that? That's uh, that's one uh, that's one crazy thing. But, I meant, like, uh, it, was a, it was a decent match. I meant, like, the crowd got her very hot. And, uh, I meant, like, uh, that's the one thing. And I know that's at the end of the... At the end of the match, uh, Asuka wins to retain her undefeated streak, and uh, that's pretty much it. And I know at the end of the match, uh, Nia Jax uh, attacks her and uh, puts her, like a like a spears her through the uh, ringside uh, barricade, uh, which uh, whatever that is that's protecting the ring announcers area. So um, I'm going to say that if uh, Dave Meltzer's rumors are true, this might be a way to write off Asuka from Raw, because there is a rumor from Dave Meltzer that uh, Asuka would jump ship to SmackDown to face uh, Charlotte for the SmackDown Women's Championship, but uh, we don't know exactly for sure. If uh, the rumors are true, I will definitely let you know. That's all I could say. I will definitely let you know. Next up was uh, Matt Hardy versus Bray Wyatt. It was uh, a match that wasn't exactly that great. I expected it to be pretty silly. I meant like a there. I meant like a so far uh, the WWE is not handling the woken Matt Hardy gimmick uh, too well because uh, I meant like a, I gotta say the TNA or Impact Wrestling, shall I say, they handled it a lot better because uh, mainly for the most part, it, Matt Hardy had creative freedom as well as uh, Jeremy Borash, uh, who was helping Matt Hardy at the time. And now Jeremy Borash is uh, signed with the WWE, but uh, Jeremy Borash is not on the Monday Night Raw creative team. So Ed Kosky, the head writer for Monday Night Raw, doesn't know what to do with uh, Woken Matt, so... I thought it was uh, wasn't that great of a match, and plus the crowd are pretty much shat on it when they were chanting for "We got be- we want beach balls." I was like, first of all, stop, stop with the beach balls. I mean, like a uh, your like a uh, demand for beach balls is the reason why we can't have nice things. Okay, so stop, Las Vegas. Don't like uh, ask for beach balls. All right, don't ask for beach balls. I mean, like, they pretty, the crowd pretty much uh, shat on the match, uh, the entire thing. And, uh, like, at the end, uh, Matt Hardy wins uh, the match, uh, like, uh, keeping it even against Bray Wyatt because uh, Bray Wyatt defeated Matt Hardy on an episode of Raw 25. So, in this uh, pay per view, Matt Hardy wins to, to maintain, a, like, a one to one streak. Yay, 50 50 booking. Next up was the segment between uh, Ronda Rousey where she was going to be signing her contract uh, with the WWE, particularly the Monday Night Raw brand. Uh, I thought it was a little bit cringe because uh, like a dur- it wasn't just Kurt Angle in that segment and Ronda Rousey. It was also Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. And uh, like a Triple H and Stephanie were like boasting about how they wanted to have ronda rousey and all that but then like uh, angle was the one who reminded ronda rousey about the time at wrestlemania 31 where uh, triple h and steph were trolling ronda at uh, ringside and then ronda decided to join the segment and uh, like uh, put a broke uh, stephanie's arm so i meant like uh, that was a uh, the only the best part of that uh, segment was uh, Ronda Rousey like a uh, suplexing Triple H through a table. That was pretty funny. <laughs> that was pretty funny. And I know that Stephanie McMahon got angry and slapped uh, Ronda in the face. So I got a feeling that uh, there is going to be a match at WrestleMania with uh, Kurt Angle and Ronda Rousey versus uh, Stephanie McMahon and Triple H. Uh, 
because it is Ronda Rousey's debut in the WWE, so they're probably gonna like a ease her way in first, and then uh, like a then they'll like a do something else uh, later on. And uh, the one thing that uh, I found out is that Ronda Rousey, upon signing with the WWE, she now has a feud with Stephanie McMahon. I mean, what does that tell me? It tells me that, uh, like, uh, the last time a full-time uh, WWE superstar was feuding with Stephanie McMahon was uh, Brie Bella back in 2014, and it did not go very well. It did not go very well, because uh, for the one, for the most part, at SummerSlam, uh, Brie Bella lost to that match. Uh, she never really recovered in her singles career. She pretty much uh, had to go through a really bad feud against her twin sister, Nikki Bella, and then that feud ended prematurely. Brie Bella ended up becoming Nikki Bella's sidekick, and uh, that's pretty much it. That was pretty much uh, her entire singles career. It came to an end around uh, WrestleMania in 2016. I mean, because now, like, uh, she's uh, semi retired. She became a mother. So, personal life, uh, Brie Bella did okay, but uh, that's that. And I'm going off on a, t- a tangent. So, let's get back into this uh, podcast, shall we? The last uh, match uh, of the pay per view was the men's no escape construct match, where all seven men are in this, uh, are in this uh, match, where Three men, such as The Miz, Finn Balor, and Seth Rollins, were the ones to start the match as a triple threat in the ring while the rest of the four are waiting their turn in the No Escape uh, Construct pods. It was uh, it was definitely interesting because uh, like uh, when... Uh, the Miz uh, tried to like uh, do a two suite with Finn Balor, but uh, Finn Balor pretty much declined and told him that you're not part of the Balor Club, which I thought that was pretty interesting. But things uh, got more interesting when Braun Strowman entered the elimination. <clears throat> excuse me, no escape uh, construct, and uh, pretty much uh, eliminated everyone, almost everyone. Braun Strowman eliminated almost everyone in that match. I mean, like, he first eliminated The Miz, and then he eliminated Elias, and then John Cena, Finn Balor, Seth Rollins, and then the final two of the no escape uh, construct match was... Uh, Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns, and uh, Braun Strowman definitely had a great outing in that match, but uh, LOL, Roman Reigns wins, uh, and Roman Reigns will face uh, Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship at WrestleMania 34. Overall, I'm going to give the uh, No Escape pay-per-view a C+. Uh, The No Escape construct uh, matches were were pretty good but uh, the rest of the card was pretty underwhelming so um i'm going to give uh, no escape a c plus on the next podcast i'll be talking about the monday night raw after the no no escape pay-per-view so stay tuned and i'll see you next time